Hey folks, it's Rithgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Farming Simulator 19. We're going to have another go with the trees down over there. Uh, several of you said that you got on with the new chainsaw far better than you did with the old chainsaw and that maybe it was partly to do with where I had it. Um, but yeah. I didn't have a good experience with the chainsaw first time around. So we will have another look at that. And I do want to move that timber out of the way anyway. So we're going to do that. Before I do that though, um, I'm aware that a lot of people are struggling to get key bindings and stuff. Now this may have been more sorted by the time this video goes up. But at the moment, what I did was I went in here. Right, you go to that one right there. This starts on keyboard controls right there. Uh, I went over to gamepad controls over here, and you can see this is empty pretty much. What I did was I reset all, first of all, and I, I used the reset all. I've installed update 1.1. So those of you got a direct giants key, install update 1.1. I don't know if it's active on Steam yet, but I got that one in and updated. Then I came into the game and I've reset everything, completely reset the lot, and it automatically bind it would automatically bind everything down here. So then what I did was I went down through and I've put the buttons that I use on my steering wheel, the buttons that I want to use for doing different jobs, I've assigned them, right? And what I also did was I deleted every other single binding. I've gone down through, you click on a binding like that, you can escape to cancel, backspace, remove current key binding. I went through, I deleted every single key binding on there so it was completely blank. And then I went through and I've assigned what I want to use on them. So switching vehicles, uh, attach tool, selecting between tools, I don't, I use that on the keyboard controls. And so I've only gone through and I've assigned the ones, the buttons that I use on my steering wheel. And also, you scroll down here a little bit, I've got a few bits down here. This is all on the Driving Force GT on the pedals down there. And then I've got the Logitech right there that does the front loader arm. And that will should go for all the front loaders. Um, unload there. And also there was another one as well that I did. Dump on ground and toggle cruise control. So I've gone through and I've very carefully made sure that I've got all of them. Now, I do also have walk backwards and forwards and walk right and left. So that I can, when I'm in here, I can use my steering wheel and I can just shuffle sideways a little bit if i want to it's quite useful sometimes for me to be able to do that i don't use it very often in mostly that is something i use when i'm recording time lapse um it's very good when i can you know if i'm doing some pressure washing i can hold the pressure washer in place and i can just very slowly move across and it doesn't look out of place then on the time lapse it doesn't sort of look weird or anything and it's it's quite good it produces a good effect i used to use it in fs15 and i didn't use it at all in fs17 because i didn't know how to do it and i've just now rediscovered that bit so um yeah if you're having trouble just go through reset everything delete all of the key bindings that you've got for gamepad controls and then go through and set up the ones that you want took me i had a timer going it took me 12 minutes to do that go through and set everything the way that i wanted it it took me 12 minutes so take 12 minutes out of your day set all that up ignore all the rest if you don't normally use them then unbind it right get rid of it if you find when you're playing that you do want to use something say while you're playing you want to be decreasing the axis distance or no, i don't know what that is actually i have no idea but uh, cruise control increase cruise control now i do sometimes use that right so i could set that one up right now i can use that on the d-pad on the side on my steering wheel so i'm going to do driving force gt there up and then decrease i'm going to put the down one on the d-pad as well job done those two are now mapped save controls save successfully i've now got that bit added in down there so i've you know just found two that i might possibly want to use don't worry about any of the rest of it. So I'm hoping that that will help anybody that's having some issues. I know there are some issues with getting stuff set up. Uh, so I'm hoping that we'll deal with that. The other thing that I wanted to show you is that under small tractors right now, I don't know what the rest of you have got, but um, this is yesterday for me. For you, as, you, as you're watching, this is my yesterday. Uh, the Hurleyman tractor is now available as a mod on Mod Hub, so you can go and get that one as well as that Deutz there. So we've now got a Hurleyman has come back. That is absolutely fantastic. I'm very pleased to see that one. Uh, and then also, 
Now this is way better as far as I'm concerned. This is this is the one that was missing, and it's one that we're going to be using. Bailing technology. There we go. The Ursus T127 carries eight round bales. That's the bad boy that I wanted. The Schmetterling there, we did have a little bit of problems with it. Uh, we will come back to that one and we'll try it again. But right now, is that Ursus, that one right there. There'll be a round bale wrapper turning up into the game as well at some point soon. I don't know when it's going to turn up, but there will be a round bale wrapper turning up. So we've finished this field here. We have now harvested the barley and we've harvested the wheat. We've got beans right down there that we want to do something with. And we will do something with them, but we're not going to do something with them right now. So I'm just going to put the pipe out here, and I'm going to run over, drop this into that trailer. We will start the harvesting going again, and then... Oh, hang on a minute. Um, the cruise control is not disabling at the moment, even though I've got my settings on... Right, there's a, there must be a setting somewhere in there for disabling the cruise control. I need to find that. Right, unfortunately... At the moment, the cruise control thing has started playing up again with the pedals. That might be because of all of the significant changes that I did. Uh, it doesn't feel sluggish on the pedal, but yeah, that's not working. It, it might just be because I need to exit the game again and then come back in or something like that. But it's not auto-disabling like it should. There is one little test we can do to see if it's auto-disabling like it should. I put it going like this and then right it does work on the keys it does work on the keys but my pedal is feeling a little bit sluggish so i'm wondering if maybe all of the significant changes i've done has actually altered it slightly so that it doesn't um it's, it's not working properly There's, i'm not i'm not going to worry about that now that's a, a minor detail i will deal with that and if i do have a solution i'll tell you in the next episode and then we can worry about it then so we've got a chop straw texture going down onto the ground. Pretty sure that used to be as standard anyway. I know you had the chop straw add-on. Oh, hang on a minute. Why am I... Why is it telling me that? When I jump in, why is it telling me that I need to do that? What to do with the pedals, maybe? No. Don't know. Not quite sure what's going on there. Right. So, yes. It is always an adventure to get your pedals and uh, your steering wheels and all your peripherals all set up at the beginning of any game. It's always going to be an adventure. Some people will have a really simple, easy time of it, and some people will struggle with it. My only advice is try not to let this taint your experience of the game in any way. Because it's something that happens to a huge number of people whenever a new game comes out there is always issues with steering wheels attaching, right? You get so many different combinations of steering wheels and joysticks and everything else and pedals and, and so on and so forth. There's always issues and problems here and there. You, you, it's difficult to like get everything sorted out. So try not to let the experience taint your overall impression of the game. You do have to try to compartmentalize that little bit. I know it's incredibly frustrating. It is for me as well. I find it incredibly frustrating having to go through and set everything up. I really hate it. What's worse is when you get everything set up and you think, finally, I've done it. And then something happens, an update comes through or something like that, and it's like, ugh, I've got to do it all again now. And you do. You have to then start all over again. You have to go through and do all of that key binding and um, sort of trouble, troubleshooting and, and stuff like that all over again in order to be able to get it just right. Now then, ignoring all of that, what I want to do is I want to move that great big log out of there. I don't like it being stuck in there like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop down that one there. And we'll spin round. Actually, I'm not even going to worry about putting a weight, a counterweight on this one. I don't think it needs a counterweight that badly. Uh, it could occasionally use a counterweight. But uh, we will, for now, we're not going to worry about it. And we're going to come over here and we're going to attach that one. Then we're going to just move that up. Let's just see. So um, my joystick is working just fine. I've got that. That one's all on there and that one's working fine. I'm going to unattach that one. number of you pointed out what I did wrong with this one down here last time. And I did do it wrong. I thought that, you know, it... it 
disconnected, but I couldn't sort of see how the rest of it worked. So a number of you have been quick to point out what I did wrong there, which is absolutely fantastic, because now I'll be able to, I hope... Right, see, you, you drop it down like that, okay? Now, I do have a slight problem. Up in the top left-hand corner, I have a frame rate counter for... And it, it also it shows that my recording is actually recording properly. Um, but it does cover up the symbol for the tractor, which is really frustrating sometimes because I can't quite make out what colour the thing is. It would be much better for me if that was moved down to the bottom right or if there was an option to move it down there. So if anybody's thinking of making a mod for moving just the symbol for the tractor down to the bottom right where it used to be, like just above maybe the, um, the, the, the miles an hour sign down there, the, the speedo and everything, I'll love you forever. I really will. I swear it. Right. Um, what do I want to do now? So I've got that one. I need to switch over to there. There we go. We can so it's on the start of noting. And then I did this, right? And I can't figure out what to do. It's like it, it's stuck. It's not coming out. Okay. What you need to do is you need to just drop it down. Some people actually seen this when I was messing around. Well, I, I, I wasn't actually being thick. I was just like showing you what not to do. As many people said, this is a bit like a pot of pasta that you go and buy from the supermarket. It comes ready equipped with its own fork. This one is just the same. This one also comes ready equipped with its own fork. So I can take said fork out and I can attach this machine from any of the three sides. I can go to this side over here like that and you, you, you just poke it in like that. Attach. There we go. It's ready to roll. It's ready to throw straw out. So thank you very much to everybody that pointed out just how incredibly thick I was. I really do appreciate it. Um, nobody actually worded it like that, although you could tell there was, was definite suspicion behind all of the suggestions that really, Frith, are you actually this dumb or are you just like putting on a show? Uh, no, I'm actually this thick. Don't worry about it. It, it happens a lot. Once I once I, once I see it, once I, once I see these things, and, and um, you know, I am able to, uh, I am able to learn from these things. But yeah, I really genuinely didn't see it. I promise you, I was not, like, putting on a show or anything like that. Genuinely didn't see it, didn't have a clue. I was just completely oblivious, um, as so often happens in my gameplay videos, which is... Okay, um... Oh, yeah, of course, the, 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 the cruise control. I got used to it working. Um, I need to be aware that it doesn't currently work at the moment. It doesn't disable. I'm hoping that that is, like, a, a temporary thing. Right, I'm going to put the spike in through here right that the spike didn't seem to do anything then so let me just lower that down did the spike go under the log see the spike doesn't seem to be doing anything at all with this log it, it's it's not wanting to oh there we go there right so you can grab it up with that one it is possible to do it it's just difficult now, what I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to bring this one over here like this, and I'm going to drop that one down there so that we can see it a little bit better for using the chainsaw. And hopefully this chainsaw is going to be a bit better than it was last time. Our combine is still working over there. We're going to come over to here, and... Yep, there we go. Right. So we go to the chainsaw like this. Now, we can still move it round... Where the circle is, is off to the side, whereas it didn't used to be. It used to be more in front of you. So you used to be able to see it a little bit more clearly. So I want to put that chainsaw there. It's, it is, it does seem a bit savage to me, that the, the way that it moves over. I, I, do, I, I am a, sort of looking at that sort of from the point of view of time lapse and thinking that's going to be terrible. And this is one little bit that I don't like. I'm getting no on-screen warning anywhere to say that I can't pick that up. It's just not letting me pick it up. Uh, so I'm not quite sure if I've clicked or not. I've got to do that in order to... It, excuse me. Um, that's... I'm... Yeah, I'm really torn on that as to whether I like it or not. And... Uh, I, I don't know. I guess I can get used to the chainsaw itself. I guess this this is... It's one of those things I'm just going to have to get used to. Um... I'm, I'm thinking it's just because, partly it's because it's so, like, dramatically different to what I am used to. So let me crouch down here and around like that. Where is, right, that one is up there. If 
I come down this side. Right, so now... Right, I've, I've got the cha chainsaws all the way over. Right, it's going to there. How high have I got to do this thing in order to make it work? Right, I want to... Oh, I want to cut this tree down. Okay, it, it wants me... It really wants me to cut the tree down with a really big stump, doesn't it? So I'm going to cut it up there. So I'll do that. i cut all the way through. I kind of like being able to see the chainsaw here. Right, that... I, I think that is quite good, that I can see the chainsaw properly. But it's this bit. Right, now... I, right, I haven't got all the undergrowth that I had previously, okay? We've now... We've, we've got a bit more space. So it's this bit here. The trimming of the branches. Okay, this is the bit that I was struggling with last time. It seems to work all right until you get to there. It's, it's the, the bit that's really off-putting for me is where it's trying to, like, shake it around every time that it goes to catch on a branch. And that bit is quite disconcerting, at least. It's, um, it's making it difficult for me to sort of see what's going on. Um, I think mostly it's a visual effect that I need to get used to. So we'll come up through there, look, right there. I suppose it does give you more of an indication that your chainsaw has bitten onto the tree and is trying to cut rather than is just uh, clearing the branches off. And that I can see, yeah, that's that's a good thing. Ooh, nope, I don't want to do that. Um, there, I can, I can do that. And then... Right, I've got a couple of them up there, like that. Right, so we've trimmed this one down. Oh, I've got another little bit over there. Let's see if I can uh, do that from underneath, maybe. There we go. Right, that's cut through. So we've trimmed all of those off. That's so all of the excess branches. All cut back. And then we've just got, like, the, the separate logs now that we want to cut through. So that one sort of... Yanks over there. It does cut faster. There's a huge positive there in the speed that it now cuts. It's a lot faster than it used to be. And I actually like that. I think that is a good thing. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm thinking overall, I'm not a fan of the new chainsaw at the moment. This is something that I would like to see done a different... Like that up there. Why am I not able to cut that branch? I think I'm going to cut it down here. There. Cut that one through there. There we go. Cut that piece out like that. And then cut that one like that. Uh, right. We'll come back to that in a minute. So overall, I am I think it's a little bit better than I thought it was yesterday. Right? So I've, I've, I've sort of... It's moved up a little a little notch or two, but I'm not wild about this new chainsaw. I've got to be honest. This, this is the first thing I've found in this game that I'm really thinking, I really don't like this. You know, look beyond the frustrations that the pedals and stuff have imparted. Right, what are you doing? I've, I've got some issues right now. It's trying to break and go forward. I think that is to do with maybe the dead zone on the pedals or something has gone off a bit. I'm not quite sure what. But it looks like it's trying to drive forward and reverse at the same time. That might be dead zones again and, and things like that that have affected that. It's entirely likely that that's down to dead zones and things. That's okay. This is all part of the setup process. So we'll uh, in the next episode because um, what I'm doing, another thing that I'm doing is I'm recording one episode with the steering wheel and then the next episode, which is the garage one, I'm recording that without the steering wheel. So I'm going into the game with the steering wheel attached. And then the next time I go into the game, I don't have the steering wheel attached. And then the next time I'm going in with it attached. And I know that some people will play like that sometimes. Usually you wouldn't. Usually you would have the peripherals attached. However, if I go into the game with the uh, steering wheel unattached, I still have the joystick attached. So this is kind of... You'll be able to see sort of the, the, the testing, you know, it's, it, it's a good test, I feel, of how things are working out with that. Now, I'm going into the oats. Do I have the straw chop? The Right, the straw chopper is still chopping. So we want to change that one over. I need to press that one to change that over. There. It's now gone to straw. Uh, I'm just going to press H. Let that carry on down through there. 
Is it going to try and turn around when it reaches our house down there, or is it going to keep going? I'm hoping it will just keep going. I, I, maybe I do need to, like, nudge it uphill a little bit, but I think it'll be all right. There's plenty of room to get past there. We know there's room to get past, but does the hired help? The hired help is actually able to cope with it. Okay, that's a good thing. The hired help is able to cope just fine. So we'll let that one carry on with his oats, and we want to go and take this one and very quickly unload these beans. Uh, Got to be careful with the cruise control at the moment. Um, so yeah, in our next episode that I do, you'll see I will have already gone into the game without the steering wheel. I'll come back in. I could give you an update on any issues that we may have had with it and how it's affected gameplay and so on and so forth. So you, you should easily be able to see that. Um, the... Right, we're going to bring this one out. The other thing was I was asking you a couple of episodes ago, did you want me to do cows or sheep or pigs up here for our next animals? I'm going to do one, or, I'm going to do one of them. I'm not going to do all of them, but I am going to do one of those animals. And it's very close between cows and sheep, although it does look like there's marginally more people would prefer sheep to, uh, sorry, cows to sheep to start with. The arguments in favour of sheep, I actually quite agree with. Um, you've got less setup costs involved with the sheep, whereas the cows, we've got to get extra stuff. Um, the sheep would be a lot easier, but cows is what you want, so we will get a small pen of cows. I'm actually thinking we, we'll try and get both, but cows is what we're going to have to go for first, because that's, it does seem like the majority of you want cows. Um... The only other thing I was going to look at was the price, right? A small cow pasture is 100, and how much is a small... Right, and a small sheep pasture is only 65. So we're looking at $35,000 difference between the two. And that's actually causing me to lean more strongly towards getting sheep and then going for cows afterwards. Because it is very close between the two. There's like maybe one or two uh, comments more in favour of cows than there are sheep. So I'm, I'm sort of... I'm using my discretion on this one. I don't always go exactly what everybody says, but I, I'm going to sort of use my discretion on this. And I'm thinking, right, we want a bail loading wagon like that. Customize. Yes. There we go. And I want to do that. And then I want to come forward over to here. And I want to stop there. Right, the other thing that I want to do is I want to find out where we got a biogas plant. There you go, biomass heating plant, and you got a barn. You can use those without having to buy them. As far as I know, though, in order to be able to use the biogas plant up there, you do actually have to buy the piece of land that it is sat on first. It's right there. It's in its own little section of land, and you've got to buy the biogas plant in order to be able to use it and make a load of money from it. And... Some people are saying they don't like that. That does actually make more sense to me because you'd normally you'd make the silage under contract for the biogas plant. So if you're selling a load of silage into the biogas plant as it's being run, that kind of sort of more indicative that you own it rather than uh, anything else. So I quite like this idea. The sawmill is apparently something that we can use without having to buy it first. Because if you look there, right, you zoom in a bit, it's got, though, it's got an area there that... Um, doesn't come up with anything, and it's got an area there on the sawmill that doesn't come up with anything either. Um, I think it does the same over here. Let me zoom out a bit. Port grain. The port grain elevator there. You can't select it in order to buy it. So you don't actually have to buy the sawmill in order to be able to use it. The spinnery over here. Now, I don't know about the spinnery. I don't know whether you... I don't think you need to. And then you've got this one over here. Again, that one's separate. That's not actually lit up in blue. So that suggests that you don't need to own it in order to be able to sell stuff. And this is really cool. I, I really like this sort of bit here where it's showing you that you don't need to own some of these things in order to be able to use them. But then there are others that you do need to own. And the biogas plant is one that you've actually got to go and buy first. $400,000 in order to be able to buy the biogas plant and then start using it. And... I genuinely like this idea. I think this is a really cool idea. I know some people are not going to like it, and they're going to think that that's not such a hot thing. Um, for me personally, that is a really nice touch. I genuinely do like that. 
Now, what I'd like to do next is I want to try and get that big log there loaded onto this trailer. Can we do it with a bale spot? I very much doubt we can. I think I'm going to have to go up to the um, dealership and get ourselves a different spike. I mean, I might be able to sort of nudge it like that. Yes, I can. Okay, that's ideal. But we'll do it like that instead then. And I don't need to go and get a bale, uh, a log grab. Just going to make our lives a little bit easier just for now. We go. We put that one on. And then I want to try and get this one. And this one's this one is going to be a bit more difficult. <laughs> okay. It would appear that it is possible to get the bale spike stuck in the ground. Which I think is absolutely magnificent. I love that I can get the bale spike stuck in the ground. I mean, it is a little bit inconvenient, it must be said. I would prefer not to stick the bale spike into the ground. But that's, I actually quite like that it did go into the ground there a little bit. That was very cool. Um, this also knocked my log off the trailer. I want that log to stay on the trailer. I don't want it to come off. Our next big thing is going to be, can we get this log off the trailer at the other end? That's going to be a thing. As, uh, up at the sawmill, if I don't take my tractor here with the, bail, with the spike on it, am I going to be able to unload that? I think I will take this tractor. We'll use the fence in order to be able to do this. And we, that's how we'll test it. Uh, so, right, I want to just lift that one up a little bit. I'm going to get that little log right there. We've shredded the tyre on the back of that trailer. Very irresponsibly shredded it. I mean, we've utterly decimated that tyre. That tyre will never be used again. Not for anything. Right? There's, there's just no way. It's just not going to happen. So I'm going to come over to here. Oh, another thing about the whole key bindings and stuff. Um, when I first attached my steering wheel and I came into the game, I was able... Like, I'd set up some of the key bindings without actually deleting all of the other key bindings on the steering wheel. And I went into a vehicle and then I went to press E to get out of the vehicle off my keyboard and it wouldn't let me get out of the vehicle. After I unbound all of the other stuff, then and only then was I able to exit the vehicles using E. So just... That may, there may be a conflict between some of something on your um, steering wheel and stuff like that that is stopping you from being able to um, exit vehicles or something like that. So if you've got any issues, unbind a load of stuff. It might be to do with that. That that could be like the root cause behind it all. Anyway, let's just move this one. We have got another tree over there that we want to do something with, but we're not going to worry about that for a minute. I want to just try this out. Bring you over this way. And I'm going to bring you up there. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely get, I'm definitely more sluggish at the moment. And I suspect that is to do with my um, the axis settings or something. Um, have reset before they should have done. Um, which is something that I'll look at later. I won't worry about it. Now, it might be because I reset everything. I, I set everything to reset when I first came into the um, game and I was trying to set stuff up. So that could also have had an impact on axis settings and sensitivities and, and all those kinds of things. There are 101 different settings that you've got to get right and tweak and play around with. Eventually, you'll get them. And then you've also got uh, steering wheels. They come with their own bits of software things like that that is also you know there's conflicts is caused by it and generally you get lots and lots of frustrations and i know it's frustrating i really do um and the only reason i'm asking you the only reason i'm sort of keeping on about not letting this uh, cloud your judgment of the game is because i'm aware that it can i am aware that it can and then if you sort of let it cloud your judgment of the game i find that it can actually spoil your overall experience in the game as well you, you, you sort of this it starts to come to the fore and you, you start to sort of focus more on the the downsides rather than the positives and then overall that then impacts on your enjoyment of the game in general and 
it is it, it it's like an it's like a cumulative thing it, it does it stacks up and you, you're not even aware that it's happening but trust me on this it really does and i've seen it with like comments and i've noticed it myself and now that i'm sort of i'm more aware of how these things can um add up over time and i try to sort of be conscious of the fact uh, right now uh, like the chainsaws yesterday you know I, I stood back and i've objectively looked at the chainsaws a little bit and i think part of the frustration of it was because i had it all buried in there and i couldn't see what i was doing at all and i think that did negatively impact on my experience with the chainsaw i'm still not wild about the way that the chainsaw moves i must i, I re i'm really not i prefer the way that it used to do it however um i'm not sort of I'm trying to not let it cloud my overall judgment. It maybe I need a bit of time to get used to it. Something like that. It's quite different to how it was. So it might just be that that significant difference is like the the, the main point of it. Now, can we stack an entire tree up onto this trailer? If we can do that, that would be quite cool. There we go. That one can go into there. I think we might be able to. We might be able to get this whole tree onto this trailer. We get that slightly bigger log there and stack that one over onto that side. I think I've got more space over on the other side. Let's run around that side and take a look. The combine's doing well over there. Oh, yeah, I've got loads of space over here. Not quite as much as I hoped, but I have got some. Uh, let's go to there. Right, drop that over. Okay, so now he's got a nearly full grain tank. There is a little test I want to do with the combine. You used to be able to do this in F17. And that is take the combine, run it over to the grain store, and then unload the combine directly into the grain store. Sometimes it would work. Sometimes you'd have to force unload so that it would unload onto the ground. But it would still work. So we're going to go into here now. And I'm going to do L like that. Do it again. Let's set down. Right. So now I've got all of those logs on there. I'm going to unhitch that one, and I'm going to move this trailer out of the way. We can't go and empty that combine ourselves until we've gotten rid of these logs. Oh, hang on, there's another one there. I nearly left one behind. Let's go and grab that one. The final log, right here. Bring this one over. That one's going to tuck right in on there. You watch. There we go. See? Told you. And we do have to make sure that we fasten that one on. So let me just lift this up. I'll tell you what, I'm going to lift that one right up. Like that. And then I'm going to crowd it over like that. It seems like it might be the safest way to do this. And run back round this side. I like the pipe there. It's just sat back down on the side of the tip pipe there. I'm assuming actually that this one does still tip. Even though it's a flatbed, which is going to be great for like unloading the logs. That's going to work really well for it. So we hit you on there. Now the pipe... Oh, uh, let me just skip out a second. Uh, the pipe has now actually gone up and is physically attached to the tractor. There's no brake pipe on this one. But we've got the pipe physically attached to the tractor. It's a lovely lovely little attention to detail there that I think is just absolutely brilliant so I take the straps off and put them back on again so that everything is now covered with the straps and we're going to run this all the way up to the sawmill that combine is going to be full very soon we should run our test no we'll, we'll leave the combine until he's full we'll let him run backwards and forwards until he's full and we'll run this one up the road I'll also be able to see now if my pedals are still doing what they should be doing. I've got... Oh, hang on a minute. Ah, uh, I think everything is reset. I said reset. Right. Okay, it does look like it's done it. Um, what I did in here is gamepad controls. I reset all. There is one set of options in the main menu that changes it doesn't just change your um it's, it's not possible to change that in the game it's the axis sensitivity and stuff like that and it also sets your dead zones on your steering wheel and your pedals and everything else right that one 
out of the game. You can only access that one from the main met from the like the main main menu, um, and if you've got that one, uh, Axis One for me is my steering wheel. The default on that is 14%. You've got a 14% dead zone. I'm turning my steering wheel quite a bit before the wheels turn at all. I normally set that down to 2%. Zero, it, it's too much. It doesn't actually work on zero. It, it, you Basically, you, you're trying to move the steering wheel. It's constantly moving all the time. You can't actually stop it from moving. 2% uh, for me is perfect because I can center my steering wheel. I've got a little tiny, uh, it's just a slight click feeling on the steering wheel. And so that allows me to find the dead center point. And that works absolutely wonderfully. It goes really well. Um, and so I set the dead zone on 2%. And I haven't got to worry about it. It works absolutely perfectly. Right. So I want to just stop there a second. And I want to find out where I need to go. I do need to, I need to go across there and then up that road up there. Um, but yeah, what it does is... On 14%, I'm having to turn my wheel by quite a significant amount before I can um, get any movement on the actual steering wheel, on, on the steering wheels, uh, sorry, on the wheels, on the tractor at all. I'm, I'm moving my steering wheel quite a bit. Um, and this is, a, so I'm assuming that it's reset. Because I reset everything in the game, that's the reason that it's gone and done it. So I will have to do that outside of the map and then come back in and hopefully then everything will be working exactly as it should be including the cruise control bit as well and i will update you tomorrow on what changes have happened concerning that but that's that's kind of answered that question for us that's why the cruise control wasn't working because it looks like everything has been reset and the cruise control doesn't seem to disable properly with my steering wheel when it's on just 100 percent um but, yeah, again, we, we don't actually know if that's just my steering wheel or if that's everybody's steering wheels or what. You know, there's, there is 101 different answers and questions and stuff. So let me just come over to here. So what do we got here? If I go like that, sell wood, art, uh, like that. Wait a minute. Ah. Right, wait a minute. I bring this over here. I'm not auto-selling any wood at the moment, right? There's no, there's no auto-sell. I'm going to press that just to do an unload there a minute. And then I'm going to go over here and I'm going to press R. Sell it. That is fantastic. You get the wood, you bring it over, you line it up on there, and then you sell it. And we just got seven and a half grand for that tree. That's pretty good. That is a fairly reasonable amount. Of course, I do want to see what happens if we don't tidy the tree up. We can bring a whole tree. In order to do that, I'm going to need something a bit bigger. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll deal with that. Let's get back to the yard. And then we can always come back up here in a little bit. We'll just drive out through here. Looks just as easy. Uh, yeah, let, let's get back to the yard a minute. And we've got a combine that needs emptying. I tell you what. I'm getting really frustrated by this um, lack of uh, this increased dead zone that I've got on at the moment. So I'm just going to stop right there. And I'm just going to flick straight over to the combine. We're going to press H there to come out of helper mode. And then I'm going to start turning round. I love the way the crop bends as you go through it. So we got all this straw that we need to bale up. We will be getting that Ursus thing, and we'll be using that one. Then we've got our small trailer that we could use. We could load some of the bales onto that trailer and take them up the road and sell them in the barn. That is a possibility. Don't know if we're going to yet. We're, well, we're going to want to keep some, but I, I don't really know how many we want to keep. So let me just bring this one over here. It auto-unloads. Right, it's auto-unloading there. I haven't pressed any buttons at all. It's just automatically dropping it straight to the store for us. And it's keeping it... It's, it can, yeah, see? There. We've got a load more coming in for the horses now. They're going to be really happy. So we haven't done very much riding. We'll go and do a little bit. We've got 94% here because the cleanliness is down. We're going to have to do something about cleanliness very soon as well. Uh, reproduction rate on there is obviously zero. 64 hours now because this is dropped. And then this one's 32 hours, and it's to do with the the colours of the, the chickens 
and the numbers you've got on each. I guess it's just that the, basically the game class is each one as a separate species, just to keep things simple. Um, that's I can live with that. That's fine. We don't mind that. Um, the what was it? It was the horses. I tell you what. That's what we're going to do. I'm going to go over here. I'm going to put the hired help going on here. Then I'm going to run over to one of the horses. I think, um, no, what I said was I was going to try and only exercise tech lime to start with. No, t Tyree, or, Tyree or tech lime. I can't remember which one. The, the Palomino. Um, that's the first one that we bought. And then we'll carry on with that afterwards. Let's just bring you over to there. You'll carry on. You're doing with that. Um, so that we can compare the difference in increased price on the horses. Um, Tyree is that one, isn't he? That's, that's, that's Tyree right there. Uh, F1. Oh, no, that's tech line. Tyree is this one. There, ride Tyree. So we're going to jump onto Tyree here. And let's back up a little bit. There we go. There, jump. And we're going to go for a little bit of a run. But we have run out of time for today's episode. So if you've enjoyed the episode, then please head down below and give us a like. And if you've really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye and see you later.